Good morning, children. Welcome to SBR online classes. Um, yesterday, children, uh, we, had, we were learning about the Marathas and the Peshwa. We know that who was the founder of Marathas, that is, Shivaji was the founder of Marathas and also we know that how he uh, struggled hard for his kingdom and how was the relationship between the Mughals and the Marathas. The relationship between the Mughals and the Marathas was not good. Always, you know, uh, the Mughals and the Burmani kingdom kings wanted to put down the power of uh, Shivaji or the Marathas. So this about this we have studied. Then at the end, when there were internal quarrels uh, in Shivaji's family, the power of the administration was handed over to the Peshwa. Peshwa was the Prime Minister during the time of uh, Maratha Shivaji. So the administration was handed over to Peshwa. So after Maratha's, uh, the administration was carried by Peshwa. Already we have studied about uh, three Peshwa, that is uh, Balaji, Vishwanath, we have Today, Peshwa, about this personality we have today, Malati, uh, Vishwanath, we have today, today, then uh, Vajira also we have studied, uh, Vajji, Rao. Of this about this personality also we have uh, studied. Then again, what we have studied yesterday, uh, we also have studied about um, third Peshwa that is Malanji Bandirao. Malanji Bandi. So about this personality also we have uh, studied. Uh, today we are going to study about uh, Madhav Rao first, the fourth Peshwa. Uh, now, some details about Madhav Rao first. Madhav Rao first was one of the Peshwa. Uh, he was the second son of Balaji Bajirao. This person. Uh, he was the second son. The main son of uh, Balaji Bajirao. Balaji Bajirao. What is? Then, uh, during his time, Madhav Rao was so Hyderabad was ruling really Mysore. What okay. did? Uh, then, point about Madhav Rao second. Okay. During his time, he defeated he defeated defeated Hyderabad of Mysore. Okay, then he also occupied Sri Lanka Patana. He also occupied Sri Lanka Patana. Then Yas. Yas. Rahis. So he captured. 
then when madhava rao first was acting as a peshwa parvi as a peshwa uh, third anglo third anglo maratha war took place and in this anglo third anglo maratha war marathas were completely or the rule of marathas completely came to an end and the british was won so during the time of madhav rao first uh, third third uh anglo maratha third anglo maratha war third anglo maratha war took place so in this war in this third anglo maratha war maratha lost maratha lost who won the british war Okay. So in this third battle of uh, Maratha, uh, that is Anglo-Maratha War, uh, the power of Maratha completely came to an end. So in third Anglo-Maratha War, uh, it was fought between Maratha and the Britishers. Anglo means Britishers, Maratha means Maratha. Okay. So it was fought between.
So many Muslim kings uh, started ruling over India in the north, the Mughals, uh, in the south, Bahamanis, and so many problems uh, were taking place during the administration. In the administrative system of these uh, Muslim kings, they were uh, levying more taxes on Hindus, extra taxes on Hindus, and many more problems were taking place in uh, society, Indian society. Okay, what are the what are the social evils? What are the evils that is in Hindu society? That is superstition, polygamy, that is system, child marriage. Female infanticide, gender equality. So these were the evils that were practiced in Hindu society. So these Bhakti saints uh, wanted to stop this. Okay. In Hindu society. They wanted to make Hindu society the best one. Okay. Because of this, and also the fear of spread of Islam in India. Okay. So because of these two reasons. There were many reasons, but here we have mentioned two reasons that is evils in the Hindu society. Uh, they want to remove the evils in the Hindu society. And also, uh, they wanted to stop the spread of uh, Islam in India. This was the, these were the reasons for the Bhakti Khan in India, Bhakti movement in India. Then, uh, who started, who started uh, Bhakti movement in India first? First Bhakti movement who started? Here I will actually. A question comes to our mind. Who started? Who started first Bhakti movement? Bhakti movement in India. Please 
spread throughout India. By so this is called the famous wealth uh, century. So Already it was started in the 5th century. Then it became famous or it ended in 18th century. Then why this Bhakti or uh, uh, what are the main teachings of these uh, Bhakti saints or Bhakti gurus? Um, first, unity of God. So these Bhakti saints or Bhakti gurus, they said, there is only one God, and He is called by different names. Then, next up, intense love and devotion is the main uh, thing to attain salvation. Then, uh, you can repeat the name of God many times. So, whichever God you, your favorite God's name, you can. By that also, you can attain moksha mukti like that. Then self-surrender. Self-surrender means surrender yourself to God. Then uh, conduct blind faith. So they said that one of the teaching of uh, Bhakti says that uh, don't believe in blind faith. Like you don't have faith on anything, wrong thing. Then uh, many bhakti saints they rejected idol worships. What it? Some uh, bhakti saints they were against uh, idol worships. Uh, uh, idol worship and some bhakti saints or bhakti gurus they uh, said to worship for idols. Some bhakti gurus were for idol worship. Some bhakti gurus were against uh, idol worship. Okay. Uh, now I write on the board uh, about the main teachings of the theme movement. Shall I write here, children? Are you following this? Okay. Let's write right? main teachings. What are the main teachings of the main teachings of the theme movement? Is what these bhakti saints are good for uh, the people. First, the unity of God. Unity of God. That is, uh, though God is known by different names, He is one, but He is known by different names. God is one. But he is known by different names. By uh, different names. Different names. Uh, Basic Kanda. Devaru Obbanu Nama Halavu. In Kanda they say. That means God is one, but he is called by different names. That means love and devotion. So you should have uh, love towards a God and like full devotion. Then only uh, this is the one uh, this is the one way uh, for attaining uh, salvation or uh, mukti, moksha or the palace of uh, or kingdom of God. The next uh, Next point I will write. Intense love and devotion. Intense love and devotion. What is uh, Intense love and devotion is the only way for salvation. Only way to salvation. Third main 
main teaching of bhakti movement we are lecturing about the repetition of the so when you repeat the name of god many times in your mind that is also uh, good okay by that also you your mind becomes uh, pure or uh, you can uh, attain uh, the salvation the way of salvation like that then for one can surrender surrender yourself to god then surrender so completely you surrender you yourself to god the next what is the next teaching of this uh, bhakti uh, says condemn condemn Blind faith. Don't believe blindly. Think whether it is correct or not. Then only you believe. Don't blindly believe on anything. The next step. What do you say? There uh, some uh, uh, gurus there. They are called adequate and wise. Why many sects? Many bhakti gurus say that they say that God is not having any shape. Virakar. Like that, but some gurus they say uh, believe that the are we uh, what to say give importance to idol worship. So suppose God for me God means Shiva. So I think that Shiva is my God. So I will worship him. So like that it is a belief. of some people so like that you know people worship uh, or give different different names to god so for me god means shiva for somebody god means ganesha for somebody god means vishnu so for somebody god means krishna so like that uh, god is one but he is uh, called by different names and they have given uh, different forms like that what is the next uh, that is what are the meanings of bhakti or the meaning of god uh, god is one but he is called by different names intense love and devotion have complete love or deep love and devotion towards god then you can attain salvation then you can repeat Uh, the name of God many times, which is like God, uh, your favorite. Then uh, surrender me completely yourself to God. Then don't be blindly. Don't have uh, sorry, condemn uh, blind faith. Then uh, some bhakti saints, you know, they rejected idol worship. So these are the. Teachings of bhakti uh, saints. Next, children, uh, we are going to study today about bhakti uh, saints. One by one. First, before that. Uh, There are two types of bhakti. That is, saguna bhakti and nirguna bhakti. 
What is this carbon monoxide? Carbon monoxide. What is carbon monoxide? Carbon Nirguna means worshipping God without idol. Okay, without form. So please do not forget. First, that is Sanguna means worshipping uh, worshipping uh, worshipping of God. Uh, with the form that is forming uh, idol worship. Then Nirguna means Nirguna means uh, worshipping worshipping of God without form without idol. Murti. Then, who is the Bhakti saints of India? So, there were more number of Bhakti saints, uncountable Bhakti saints in India. Only a few we are going to study. That is, we are going to study about Ramananda, Namdev, Kabir, Guru Nanak, Mirabai, Chaitanya. Ravidas, Surdas, these people were from uh, North India. South India, Purandara Dasa, Kanaka Dasa, Krishna Sharifa, uh, these were all the saints of uh, South, that is, especially in Karnataka. Now, first, we will write some of the names of the saints. Okay, children? Please note down this. In India, first Ramananda, these are from North India. North India. Who is the fifteen things of that is from North India? Or Ramananda, second, on the right side, now they are Guru Nanak, Guru Nanak, here I am. Chaitanya, Ravidas, and Surdas. Uh, these people are, these are from uh, North India. Okay? These are the Bhakti saints, names of the Bhakti saints who come from North India. Then South India. Okay. First, we 
is studying about
तो हिम गॉड मीन्स रामायण सीता सेंटर ऑफ एक्टिविटीज वाराणसी बनारस वाराणसी बनारस इज इन यूपी चिल्ड्रन दिस वॉज द सेंटर ऑफ एक्टिविटी वाराणसी वाराणसी इट इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज बनारस चिल्ड्रन इज इन यूपी बनारस इज वॉज द सेंटर ऑफ एक्टिविटी रामानंद He said that never ask a person's caste, Jati, because God will never ask people's caste. Does he ask? No. God will give whatever uh, you want. Is it not? Does he ask any caste? No. God will never ask that. Ramananda was. against the caste and he said the people never ask a person's caste it is not good okay um okay next video what message he has given message of ramanda never ask a person's All our children of God. What is it? The next. Year. So this is about Ramananda. That is, he was the one of the devotional bhakti saint of North India. His date of birth, that is, the place of birth is Payaga. He was from all Indian Brahmin family. His guru was Raghavananda. He was from South India. His literary works, many literary works are. वाराणसी Then what message he has given to people? They can ask a person's caste. So this is about uh, the bhakti saint Ramananda. What he has given message to people. Next we are going to study one more uh, bhakti saint that is Kabir. Kavi, one of the bhakti saints, who was born in 1440 and died in 1510 CE. 1440 to uh, 1510 CE. Okay. Uh, Kavi, he was born in a Muslim weaver family, Kabir. Now next, we will talk about Kabir. Born in Muslim, Muslim weaver family. So Kabir was a weaver by. Then his father and mother were uh, Niru and Nima. Yes, parents of Kabi. Niru and Nima. Correct. Next up, 
his wife was Shukanya. Okay? Then he had one son and daughter, and their name was Kamal, and daughter's name was Kamali. Son of uh, Rabir was called as Kamal. Daughter Kamali. So Kamal and Kamali are the daughters and son of Kabir. Uh, Kabir means what is the meaning of this? Uh, name Kabir. Kabir in Arabic means the great. In the Arabic language. Arabic language it means the great. Kabir means the great. Really he was a great uh, uh, person. Then Kabir uh, he was against idol worship. Kabir did not believe in idol worship. Got it? So he believed in Nirguna type of bhakti. Nirguna means having bhakti towards God without worshipping and idol. So Kabir was against against what? Either then against he was against idol worship. Then he worked hard, worked hard for Hindu Muslim community. So in olden days, you know, children, there were many misunderstandings between the Hindus and Muslims. So he wanted to put up all this. So he worked hard. Maybe he worked hard for Hindu and Muslim. So, Kabir had all Muslims as well as Hindu uh, followers or disciples. Okay? Then, uh, he, that is uh, Kabir, he was against the idol worship and he taught the people through Dohas. Uh, how Basarna Navaru? Or Vachanakaras taught the people uh, through Vachanas the easy way to understand. The people can understand. Like that, Kabir uh, also taught the people uh, through Dohas. Dohas are the poems uh, written in two lines. The full poem will be of two, two lines. First two, second two, third two lines. Kabir. Kabir today also, you know, uh, in our Hindi books we have Rahim ke dohe, Kabir ke dohe, Tulsi ke dohe, all this we have in our books. And these dohas uh, always teach about the morality. It is full of morality. It teaches uh, about the truth of, uh, what to say, uh, life. What is life? What is good? What is bad? What to do? What not to do? All uh, this is uh, written in Dohas. So Kabir also uh, through his Dohas he preached the people. Okay? Uh, teaching. His teachings were through Dohas. Dohas. B-O-T-H-A-S Dohas uh, That is Dohas means Complete points Complete points What is it? Uh, okay Today also Both Muslims And Hindus Both Muslims and Hindus 
reside in the point. This Doha. This Doha is a career. Doha. Kabir ke liye do hai. Today also it is uh, repeated or learned by both the black and white, both Hindu and black and Muslim people in India. Today also Doha's art famous. The next uh, followers of Kabir they are called as Kabir Pantis. Followers of Kabir are called as Kabir Pantis. He had one called Thad Bodhanya and uh, he had one son called Kamal and daughter called Kamli. Uh, Kamil Das was against idol worship. So he lived in Nirguna Bhakti. He worked hard for Hindu Muslim divinity. So in uh, older days, you know, there was uh, many misunderstandings between Hindus and Muslims. So he wanted to make uh, he wanted to bring unity among uh, Hindus and Muslims. So he worked hard for Hindu and Muslims. Then what were his teachings? He taught the people through Doha's. Uh, Doha's are nothing but complete poems which are famous till today. Till today in our uh, Hindi books we study uh, in schools as well as in um, colleges. Okay? Then, Followers of Kabir were called as Kabir Pandit. So, this is about uh, the great Bhakti Sai or Bhakti Guru Kabir. Children, please note down these points. I think, hope, I hope you are uh, noting down these uh, important points in your uh, classwork, children. If you copy these important points in your classwork or uh, rough notebook, it helps you a lot. Next, we are going to study about Chaitanya, one of the Bhakti uh, sayings of Bhakti movement. Got it? Next is Chaitanya. Okay, then he said 
or he popularized the worship of Krishna. So, uh, for Chaitanya, Krishna means God. So he said his disciples or his followers worship Krishna. All your uh, problems will be solved, or you can attain uh, salvation, mukti, or moksha. So he popularized. So why? Bhagi said worship the. Uh, that is uh, Krishna. Lord Krishna. Worship Lord Krishna. Uh, he popularized the worship of Krishna. Then, uh, you know, Chaitanya wrote many devotional songs uh, praising Krishna. So, he has written devotional songs. Devotional songs means the songs. Uh, so, Chaitanya um, has written devotional songs praising Krishna. Krishna. Right? Then he opposed. He opposed the gas system. Who opposed? Kaitanya opposed the gas system. Uh, 
uh, after him. So, latest about Durnan will be right. So, he was born place of birth. Place of birth that is Talandi. Or Talandi can take Talandi. Uh, now, at present, it will be Pakistan. Pakistan. Then he was a founder of Sikhism. Founder of Sikhism. But then after Dunal, who followed? Who was his successor? His successor was Guru Angad. But then most of the um, Sikh people. They find in Punjab. Okay, see that? Uh, this next we are going to study about uh, the teachings of uh, uh, Guru Nanak. Okay, see Teachings of uh, Guru Nanak. What Guru Nanak has taught the people? Guru Nanak. Okay, he also said that, Guru Nanak also said that, God is one. God is one, but he is called by different names. Then he gave importance to both men and women. That is equal to the equal of gender. He said that man and women, both are equal. Equal of then third teaching good deeds and moral life. Good deeds and moral life. So we are going to say one doing uh, good to others and hearing moral life. So he said that God is one. And he gave importance to both men and women. Then he also said that God means good deeds and gave moral life. So these are the uh, important things of Guru Nanak. Children, uh, about this Guru, Bhakti Guru, in detail, we will study tomorrow. Okay, children, today we have studied uh, three. About three bhakti gurus in detail. Fourth uh, state is there. Uh, tomorrow we are going to, uh, tomorrow we will continue. Okay? Thank you, children. Have a good day.